Hello and welcome back. It's a while since I put these uncoupling wraps in. Once I tested them and dropped the wires to the baseboard, I, I didn't run the wires back to the switches that I'd put in. So I've got around to that now. It took me longer than anticipated, but uh, it's a little messy, but it does do the job. So just before looking at the 262 tank locomotive, model R59, we're going to put some coaches away into those uh, sidings where I put the uncoupling ramps. And we're going to use the, the Type 2 to do that. So we're just going to roll gently up to these coaches and keep them moving. And we're going to push these rounds to points number one. I think we've got those safely there. You know, we probably shouldn't do that really, but it is just a toy train set. There we go, and we're going to stop just before point one. And then we'll switch the points. There we go. And we'll push them into the sidings, see if we can line them up over the uncoupling ramp. Nice and smooth. Overall, that point work, that extra pickup on this model really, really helps. And then we'll throw the switch. There we go. And we'll leave those coaches there. Smoothly out again. Gentle stop and we'll switch the points. And we'll take it down to points number 18. And we'll take her onto the turntable and uh, get her into the engine shed. There we go. And again. Very smooth work over the points. Onto the turntable. And then we'll rotate clockwise. And then smoothly off. That wonderful blue coloured train sitting there on the left. Great fun to look at. And there's R59 just sitting next to the Type 2. She's going to move smoothly out onto the turntable. Lovely sound, the motor on this model. Also, a great runner for such an old model. Possibly from around 56, I think. And then we'll rotate the turntable counterclockwise. Put that effortless and smoothly away. Out from the points onto the inside line. And here we've got the 1956 catalogue. It's a really dynamic picture, isn't it? This was their second catalogue, I think. And we can see it says Precision Electric and Clockwork Trying Railways. And we've got that terrific price there in, in old money and the word second edition there. It really is quite a Quite a striking image representing their, their transcontinental range and their, their British range of locomotives. So if we open it up on page number three, we'll see the 262 tank, model number R59. Now she was in the catalogue right up until 1972 in one form or another. By 1960, she'd become green and there, there were green models with single lining and double lining, I believe, over the years. And I think this is a, a shop copy. If we look, we can see uh, handwritten prices and that, that uh, runs right through the catalogue. Somebody's taking a, a great deal of time to go and do that. And if you see these two chaps here on page number two, this probably represents their, their entire range, doesn't it? We've got the old transcontinental railway here and this chap in his engine driver's cap. And uh, we've got this little boy here with his school tie on perhaps. And this British locomotive, probably a, a princess there with, with a green coach from Clapham Junction to Grand Central. What a terrific image that conjures up. I'll just have a, a swift look at a couple of the other pages before we have a, a look at the model. I think I've shown these uh, older catalogues before. I think I've said I really like the illustrations and I also said I wonder whether we would buy models today based on possibly such inaccurate illustrations. You can see those prices handwritten right the way through. Old 26 tank, 262 tank here in, in a set with a couple of suburban coaches, just like we've seen on, on the railway today. And there's the old suburban coach there, R121, 
composite coach. So we'll just uh, have a look further through. Great set of wagons. Really nice bright orange well wagon there. It's a, well, quite a colour. I've got one of those, but not, not on the layout at the moment. I think we've seen all of these wagons at one time or another on the layout in the past few months. A lovely uh, arrangement of station buildings there. Wonderful. We've got the little Ginty sitting there. And some of those short coaches by the looks of it. And we'll just move on through and then the transcontinental locomotives. And the old grey standard track. Really lovely item this. Transcontinental coaches and wagons. Now these illustrations aren't very accurate to the to the models that were produced sometimes. I love these little sort of trains at the bottom of the page, showing how they're, they're set out in the sets. Lovely engine shared signals and various access, accessories and that lovely girder bridge, which is another long lasting model. And the, the early electric turntable. I have one of those, I really must have a look at it in a video at some point. And we've got the back page with some layout track plans there. No dealer stamp on here. Uh, something written here, what does that say? Four straights, one pair of points. Must be planning for a layout perhaps. So we'll pop that to one side and just have a look at the, the box that R59 came in. You can see it's got a little damage. So it's uh, been around a bit. And there we have it, R59, 262 tank loco, black livery. And that, that price there, we should have a look really, that's a 54. And uh, we'll see if that price is the, the same in the catalogue. Should have had a look at that, we'll just have a, have a quick look. There we go, we've got 54 shillings. So it's... Uh, must be from around this period, but I have no paperwork with this model, or partial paperwork, should we say. But uh, we'll have a look at that in a second. So we've got the effect of tape. It is rather faded, this box at the top. The underneath hasn't suffered quite so much. And we can see the effects of tape on the bottom as well, where it's been sealed. Lovely thing, we'll just turn it around and lift off the lid carefully. So it is a rather an old model, it's in acetate. We've got the partial paperwork here, which is just their uh, servicing scheme dealer network. And we've seen one of these before. We'll just have a swift look at it. We won't go through it in, in huge detail. Always nice to have as much paper as possible with these models. We'll just pop that over there. And we've got a label here. There we go. Speed control unit. Do not connect direct to mains elect electricity supply. Read the instructions carefully. So possibly this isn't the this isn't a, an original label which came with the locomotive. It's just found its way into here. Maybe so it says television interference suppression fitted. So I'm not sure whether this sort of applies to a speed control unit or says that you need a speed control unit and don't. Don't connect it directly to the main supply. Well, maybe somebody knows more about that. So we'll pop that down. Now I'm not going to take her out of the box because it's quite complicated getting her out and she's very fragile and the lining is in such beautiful condition. I really do not want to uh, to damage it. Here it says it's a lift out both end blocks with the model removing the securing insert front base before extracting model end blocks. So I'll have a, we'll have a look at those once I've removed her from the box, as you can see, she is in rather splendid condition. But you can see the effects of aging on the acetate, the, the warping in the bodywork. And we'll have a little look at that later on. There she comes storming past the station now. We'll bring her just beyond points number 11, just by the gasometer there. Nice gentle stop. And then we'll switch the points. And then we'll take her back. And we'll pick up that uh, short leg of suburban coaches sitting in the station. I think we have those. And away she goes. Absolutely effortless there. Not much weight to these coaches, really. 
very well behaved to the points. I think you have a little more trouble with them once you get onto the incline because there's, there's no magnesium on the model, but on the level ground, no problem whatsoever. Lovely shot coming past the, the Susan box there into the first radius curve, slight wobble on one of those coaches, isn't it? Through the crossover, 0.7 there, onto the outside line. Into the curve, making a great sound for those wheels on the steel track. I've just removed the, the model from the box carefully and I've left the end blocks in there and we'll have a, a look at those in a moment. I've also taken out this great little bottle of oil, which is sadly empty now. Specially recommended for trying trains, it says there. Lovely Shell logo, lubricating oil. It's, it's quite an impressive logo, that isn't it, at any size. It's a, a really ni nice thing to have. Lovely cork stopper in there, and if we remove that, you can see we've got this lovely pin inserted into it, just for putting one drop of oil exactly where you want it at a time. So we'll just pop that to one side and we'll have a look at these end blocks. So this one secures the front. It says the model number there, so they are model specific front. You can see the buffer beam would go in there. And it's got this extra securing base in there, which I think these, these parts very often get lost. Let's see if we can remove that. It's been in and out many times before I've had this and it's not quite as it should be. I think there's a, there is a part missing. That's obviously there to hold it securely in place whilst it's in the box to prevent it from moving around. I'm not going to fight with that now while I'm looking through the, the camera there. We'll just pop that down and have a look at the, the other end block. Again, lovely things. Really great bit of engineering putting that together, I think. R59 rear. So this one's suffered a little bit more damage over the years. So here's lovely great big rusty staples. Terrific noise there as she's coming out of the third radius curve and up onto the incline. As we mentioned earlier, she is suffering just a little bit of wheel slip there. But I imagine if we just had the three coaches to then instead of the four, we wouldn't be suffering from that at all. And as the model went on, she did eventually get magnesium. Although I'm not quite sure of what date that, that happened. We'll just have a, a swift look at the model. It really is quite, quite lovely. Lovely detail on this, quite crude painted uh, buffer beam there with the metal buffers. The old uh, early Mark II couplings there. And it's got a screw down the chimney. I don't know whether we can just see that. So proper toy trains have screws down the chimney. And safety valves and whistles separately fitted. And I think the, uh, the old whistle there is a plastic, plastic separately fitted part just plugged in. We'll see when we look inside. You can see where that's been glued in. And I think the detail on this model is, is really quite great. I know everybody says these are my this is my favourite when we're looking at a model, but this really is one of my favourites. So uh, it's uh, quite a thing when they're, they're this old, I think. So possibly from 1956. So she survived really, really quite well. Nice step under the door and the lining's almost intact all the way along. I think people criticize this model in general because of the wheels or the wheel spacing is incorrect. And I think they use the Jinty wheels. Princess wheels may have been too big, but I think that overall as a, as a model, it, it's quite an impressive thing. So we'll just uh, turn that around and have a look at the other side carefully. Here we go. Again, the other, other side's pretty good condition, just like the the previous side there. Really quite a moulding for the time, I think. So if we just flip that over, we'll have a look underneath. These wheels solid. They, they do get dirty rather quickly when using them. And this collection plate here is plastic, which I think is quite unusual for the time. But uh, it really is in, in great condition. They've gone to a lot, lot of effort with these uh, trucks or bogies We've got a plastic insert in there, sitting under a shouldered screw holding it in, pra in place, sorry. We can just see Trying's name and the model number there, R59. And we've got Made in England. Really is a, a great thing. 
I think if we look down inside the coal bunker there, we can just see possibly the, the coal in the bottom there. It's a very, very deep down, so it's almost out of fuel, this locomotive, I think. Ready, ready to be topped up. Again, just lovely looking along the top of that. Gently coming down the incline now. Just listen to the sound of the motor. It's terrific. And the sound of the wheels on the track there as well all make a, a great effect. Away off into the distance under the gantries. It's going to swing round back under the elevated section there. We can make our way on the outside line along past the station. I've just removed the very large securing screw from the chimney which holds the chassis in place along with these two little uh, protrusions on the back end of the chassis there. It's quite a heavy chassis. Great big metal part on the back there, giving it a, a great deal of weight. Later models had magnesium and smoke, I believe. Beautiful motor. It's a really quite tidy condition. And uh, as we've already heard it on the layout, it, it makes a, a terrific sound as well. Plastic cylinders there. We'll just pop that down and have a, have a swift look at the inside of the body and perhaps some of the more distortion. So just looking at it like this, that, that buffer beam there just kicks up a little. And if we look at it from underneath, you can see the distortion in the sides of the tanks there. Quite prominent at the back here. You can just see this back buffer beam, there's a crack in it there where it's, where it's away. And the, uh, the chassis just pokes into those two holes there to hold the whole thing together. So it's in, in fairly tidy shape on the inside. Again, quite difficult to see a black model. It's uh, quite difficult to get the detail. You can just see there where the, the whistle's been glued into place. You can see where the glue's flooded, flooded around there. I don't know whether the gluing is original or not. But again, as I've said already, it really is quite a, a beautiful thing. Making our way now past the station and towards points number eight, the crossover, back onto the inside line. Nice and smoothly through there. The tiniest of wobble on those coaches, but then you have to expect that with items this old. If you have a look at the, the coaches as they come past, you'll notice the first pair are significantly lighter than the second pair. I believe these to be earlier in production. These composite coaches also came along in 1956. They lasted till around uh, 62. I believe they, they ended up with the, the, the Mark III couplings. So I've got three composites on the on the layout today. Two of them are very light like this one, and one of them is quite dark along with the brake, so it represents quite a change in the, the color of the plastics used. I don't believe they were made in acetate, these. These certainly aren't. The roofs seem to be glued on, and there's definitely no seating detail in there. And we've seen these in a video quite recently, so we won't go into too much detail with them. We've got the Triang's name and made in England, separately fitted on the frame detail there. Quite nice printing, great big large numbers and letters. So it's a, it's a quite a light plastic when you, you compare it to the to the other. It's, it's quite quite a quite a bright bright colour, isn't it? So we just pop that one down. Let's have a quick look at this one. This one's seen better days. It's, it's been in the wars a bit. But uh, it still still does the trick. It rolls quite nice and smoothly. You see the, the paint works away on the end there. Plenty of action, I imagine, this one's had. We'll have a, a swift look at the brake. So the, uh, the composite is R121 and the brake R120. I believe uh, the, uh, the composites were made briefly in 1967, a single batch, and they had uh, pinpoint pinpoint axles at that time. I don't believe these earlier models ever had pinpoints. They, they disappeared in 62, so perhaps never never got them. So this has slightly different detailing along the side. We'll just have a look at the two together. There we go, and it looks like somebody's put a, a, a sort of a, a paint colored fingerprint into the end of the model here at some point, sadly, but these things happen. So it's fairly tidy condition all the way around. And of course it does have that great detail on the end, which I believe is supposed to be windows for when the train was perhaps operated in, in the opposite direction. So lovely things to have. Just catching up with this great group of models one last time. 
as they make their way around the first radius curve there, passing the station towards points number nine, the crossover onto the passing loop. But I think that's probably it for this week. Thanks again for watching. It's hugely appreciated. And if you look back again next time, we'll have something else interesting from the range to look at. Goodbye now. <laughs>